Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to be going over the first project and the requirements for it. We've had student students in the past who've wondered how we grade these assignments and, and what they should focus on. So I figured I'd walk through a video with one of our projects and, and kind of talk about how I would grade it, things that I would do to, to check things that are here in the rubric, that are found here in the rubric. Um, so the project that I'm going to be using today is from the amazing TA, Andrew. Um, he made up an awesome example of an e-commerce project, um, something that would definitely get an A. So I'm going to be going through it. Like I said, I'm going to be going through the rubric one by one and pointing out things that I would do to check to see whether or not they reach the above and beyond, meets requirements, slightly deficient. Um, I am going over specifically things that are found in the rubric, but if you do other things to go above and beyond, please mention it to Andrew or myself or whoever your TAs are, um, so that way they can make sure and give you um, added points, add bonuses for those extra things you do. If you're going to go above and beyond, make sure that we know about it. So the first thing that I'm going to go over is this first section here, error handling. Um, and it's all about having a 4, 404 and a 500 page setup. For those of you who don't know, a 404 page indicates that a page is not found. We've talked about routing during the semester. So if there's a route that's not set up, then we want to make sure that it hits a 404 page. And then a 500 is a generic message saying that there was an error that occurred on the server. So we want to make sure that we have examples for both of those. So I'm going to go ahead and I will do a 404 error. In Andrew's projects, if I come up here and let's say we put in an invalid route. Now this invalid route should return back a 404 page and it does. One of the things that you can do to go above and beyond is create a unique and functional 404 page. Um, Brother Birch or whoever your teacher may be has set up a 404 page in general for your projects, but we want to make sure that these are unique, at least to get the above and beyond. Having that normal 404 page set up from other projects will get you that 93%, but we want to make sure that we get you that 100%. So that's 404. And this is something that I would do to then check to make sure that a 404 page would, would work. And um, we'll continue on with a 500 page before I say what grade I would give this. <laughs> Let's come back here and let's go into products and let's go into details. Now you'll notice with the details we have, oh, we don't want to do that. Um, that's cool. <laughs> but if we come over here, we have an ID, right? Well, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that ID. And if I send an invalid ID to the server, I'm hoping that I'm going to get a 500 error saying that um, this, or that there was an error that occurred in the database or whatever it may be. So if I click invalid, we're going to get some error occurred. We're working on fixing this. Sorry for the inconvenience. Obviously, this is done by me, but this is something that shows me. Yes, Andrew implemented a 500 page that works. That is triggered um, when I try and reach a, an ID that does not exist. All right, so for him, I would give him that above and beyond. Um, like I said, if you have 93% um, is just having the generic 404 and 500 page. Can't remember if there's a 500 page included in the um, in the project setup. If not, um, do that, and we'll at least give you in between meets requirements of and above and beyond. All right, so let's move on to validation. Um, I'm mainly going to be focusing on these meets requirements and above and beyond. We don't want you guys hitting down here. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the things that you can do to make sure you stay in this range. So. For validation, something that I might do, I might go into the sign up. I'm going to have to create an account for your in your e-commerce project, or we are when we're grading your assignments. So um, this is a good place for us to start when we're looking at validation. And something I might do is just from the get-go, not even entering anything into here, clicking sign up. There are ways to do it on the front end. Um, and I know in the login, if we go to login, Andrew has that set up. Actually, oh, I guess it maybe uh, <laughs> I inputted something last year. I, uh, last time I checked this, but in both cases, Andrew has unique validation implemented. 
um, which is something that will give you that above and beyond. Um, by unique, we mean not straight rip from Max's tutorials. We know that Max helps you create those error messages um, and styling. We want to make sure that they're, they're unique in your own, that you put your own twist onto it. Um, so that's something that I might do. I might even do a little bit more testing in here to see if I put in um, another email, utajordan at pest.com. Um, utajordan. Um, I might try and do it without confirming the password, see what happens. And we get a passwords have to match. Um, just from this, these simple two tests, I now know that Andrew has matured these cases where he's creating his own messages to show up for whatever error might occur. Um, so let's go ahead and sign in. I'm actually going to make this a little bit easier on myself. Let's try that. All right. I might try even validation in here now, now that I'm... Um, in his login, I might do my TA test.com, but not enter a password. The password has to be valid. It's a good error message for, for the error that I'm getting or for what I'm doing. If I come into here um, and enter an invalid password, well, I'm going to get the same error. So let's go ahead and log in. But just from these two tests, um, I would know that he has implemented his own unique validation. We also say in here, or email sign up verification reset pa uh, password functioning. He has that set up to where I can go into reset password, enter my email, click reset password, and then I'll be prompted in my email to visit a link where I can reset my password. This is something that you guys can totally do. You know, I know Max goes through how to do this. Um, SendGrid can be a little, act a little funky sometimes. So. If you have issues with that, make sure and reach out to Andrew and I, but uh, this is also a really cool functionality that will help you get to that above and beyond. Um, but even just the basic um, validation that Max does, uh, as long as you implement how he does it, uh, you're going to get that 93%. If you go above and beyond, you can make your own styling and your own messages just like Andrew's done. So once again, I would give Andrew 100% or his validation that he's done so far. Uh, let's look at the next one, professional look and feel. If we come in here, number one thing Andrew and I are looking for is that this does not look the same as Max's videos. Max is great, his site looks great, um, but we want you guys making your own website. This is gonna be something that you guys can put on your resume, uh, show to employers. And we don't want you guys to be ripping from another creator. So we can definitely tell here that Andrew has put his own spin on it. Um, there's definitely a lot of details that we can see that are coming from Max's implementation. But he's put his own spin onto it. And he's made it his own. Um, so I would just go ahead and give him 100%. Even just from the small few page interactions that I had with him. I'm seeing that this is not coming from max if i were going to fully grade this i would log in i would check out his cart and i would check out also his uh, orders page and make sure that those two are personalized all right let's move on to the next one accomplishes a meaningful task does something interesting we're just looking that you guys put some thought into what your e-commerce project does um, we're not looking for super in-depth uh, e-commerce project setup. We just want it to be um, cohesive and look like an e-commerce site, like be cent cent centralized <laughs> on something. I've had a few people that have submitted projects where it's just a bunch of random stuff. There's no cohesion. And, and because of that, I've given them a lower grade on this accomplishes a meaningful task. Just make sure you pick something. Max does a bookstore. If you want to do a bookstore, go for it. But also make sure that you put your own spin on it. Maybe you have your, your books that you're saving in the database have some extra or added attributes. That would be really awesome. I know a few people have done bookstores because they're interested in that, and that's totally okay. But we just want to make sure that you make it your own. 
So once again, I'm seeing that he is focusing on outdoor climbing equipment. I think that's awesome. We can tell that this is a very cohesive site and it does something important. So I would give him 100% as well. Demonstrates understanding of Node.js and Express principles. Dynamic route submittal where well used. All right, so um, this has to do with, with routing. So if I look into here, I can see that his each of his objects has their own ID. This is the same route technically, but we're using that dynamic ID to be able to pull these items up. That's what we mean here by dynamic routing. And of course, as the routes change, also the content changes. Now what we mean by middleware well used um, is that we're going to have some protection to make sure that anybody who isn't logged in can't reach um, part of the site that should be only for people who are logged in. So I'm assuming, I'm not too sure his routes, but if I try and go to cart, it's going to take me back to login. Cart is one of his routes, and when I am logged in, I can visit it, but because I'm not logged in, he's going to reroute me. That's what we mean by middleware, middleware well used. Um, I know that if I go into his routes, I'm going to see some kind of authentication middleware being used to assure that I don't have access to routes that I shouldn't have access to. Um, so just from that, I can tell that he's using dynamic routing, and he's using his middleware well. You can notice most of the stuff we can even check without even logging in, which is really cool. Um, all right, MVC pattern is, is easy to understand. If I come into his project and I look in here, I can see immediately that he is using the MVC pattern. We have our models here. Our models are well organized. Everything that has to do with the orders here, product, user. We go into our controller. He has a well organized, all of his... Um, logic that goes into admin, auth, authentication, errors, or to shop is in here organized in the, in the files that they should be. And then he has his views, and it's the same thing. He has them very well organized. He has an includes, and I can tell here that he has his 4, 404 and his 500 page setup. Um, so just from even just looking at this really quickly, I can tell that Andrew has done a great job at organizing his project in a very easy to understand way. So I would come back here and I would give him 100%. He's killing it. Um, and let's get to this last one. This last one is CRUD operations. Now I'm actually going to have to log in for this. So that's my, let's use my login. All right, we are logged in. All right, don't do bad passwords, guys. <laughs> They'll get mad at you. All right, but we can continue on now. And you can see here, I tried to access that cart, remember? But he has all of these are looking clean. They're looking like themselves. Let's go through each of these. We already know that the R from read is working, right? Because if we come in here, he's reading in objects. So I know read is working. Let's do create. If I come in here and I create... All right, we have my normal ones that I put in here. We'll put my robot TA just for fun. Um, I know this doesn't have anything to do with climbing, but I'll put it in here. Stock, we'll say we have five of them, and we'll say it's a great robot to do my work for me. I'm really hoping. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but this is going to uh, simulate a create. Once again, Andrew and I, we could do validation here. Um, I could go into his project and see if there are any of these fields that are required. And if they're not required, I want an error being thrown. Just for time's sake, I'm not going to do that. But for a lot of your projects, we're probably going to go into your add product and just make sure that there is some sort of validation set up for those required fields. All right, so if I click add product. All right, look, we got some front end validation going on here. Um, so I'm assuming and give it a 23. All right. And he directs me to my admin product. Now my admin product has some um, functionality here of where I can add and subtract my items, which I think is awesome. I think that's a, a way of going above and beyond 
we talk in here, it says user can use CRUD operations for more than the requirements. We might actually need to reword that to make that a little more clear, but I would think that him having this quantity for objects is a really great way of going above and beyond in the CRUD operations uh, because he's obviously saving this data to the database along with his items. Um, so create works. If I go into his products, I'm going to see this in there now. Looks a little out of place, but that's okay. Um, now if I want to edit, um, let's go to update. I can edit it here. I can come in here. Let's change the price. Let's change the stock. Let's update this and let's check to make sure that it in fact does. We check this. The price has been updated. The quantity has been updated. If I go to the products, same thing. Seven in stock, $50. Awesome. So we have create, read, update, and let's delete this because we don't want this staying in here. Obviously, this doesn't go along with the other items, and it's deleted. If I go back to his products, once again, it's deleted. Um, so that's what we're looking for when we look for these CRUD operations. And that's it. I would give them 100% for this, especially with that um, with keeping track of, of items in stock. I think that's a super cool way of going above and beyond. Um, just make sure that you mention to us in your reflection what you did. Um, that's something to note here in this um, here, let's blow this up. Something to note here. Um, Andrew did this awesome thing with the rubric to where you can um, click where you feel like you got. You can give it a points. Our crews are out of 50 points. And if I click out of that, it's going to tell me my grade over here. Obviously, he got 100% of everything, so he's going to get um, 50 out of 50 no matter what. But let's say we change it. Um, you don't feel like you did as great on some of these things, you're going to be able to get a feel for the grade that you deserve. Um, so this is a great tool that Andrew has given you guys to be able to check to see um, where you're at with your project. And if you want to get a better grade, what could you do? All right. Well, that was Andrew's project and my process of going through things that I would do to grade it. Um, just for time's sake, there's a few things extra that I would probably do with a few of these but it's not gonna be far off from what I showed you guys today. Um, once again, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to whoever your TA may be. I know that it might not just be for our class, um, but reach out to your TAs or your teacher um, if you have any questions about anything that we've gone over today. All right, good luck guys, keep coding.